Um, so this is part of the daily sessions that me and Ali conduct uh, from Sydney PT Study Center's page, discussing different aspects, dif uh, discussing different questions. And we are coming up with demo videos for you guys to highlight uh, you know, importance of PTE and of course, to give you tips and strategies to solve questions. How are you, Ali, this evening? I'm, I'm good, thank you. How are you, Atik? I'm doing well, thank you, Ali. Now, uh, the reason why I pulled out today, I, I pulled you out today is to discuss a bit further about right from dictation. So if uh, you guys remember, we had a discussion about right from dictation and its implication towards the listening section. So we discussed a lot about that yesterday. So today we want to talk a bit more about, uh, we, we want to continue to talk about right from dictation, but we want to, change our scope from listening to writing because Ali as you may as uh, all our viewers also know that write from dictation contributes heavily towards uh, the writing section and as our scoring matrix uh, shows that write from dictation is the highest contributor in our writing section so it's almost almost close to 30 percent of our writing scores coming from write from dictation so uh, today we want to highlight few specific areas of writing, uh, especially to do with certain grammar rules that's applicable specifically when, or more often when we solve write from dictation questions. So Ali, the floor is yours. How okay, you? thank you Ati. Good evening, everybody. Yes, write from dictation contributes to both listening and writing. If you apply what Atik gave you yesterday for the listening uh, part, you are securing your listening content, no issues at all. But from the writing perspective, on top of spelling, okay, which you need to perfect all the time, there are some aspects, if you don't be aware of it, if you don't be on top of it, it may affect your writing score. And every single class I finish with my students, a lot of students ask me, Ali, uh, what if I forgot to place a comma, yeah? So placing a comma is one of the aspects that uh, may affect your writing score. And this is something we're gonna discuss today. So. In today's session, we are discussing three aspects that will affect your writing score if it is not perfected. The comma rules and the possessive apostrophe and contraction. Okay. Let's start with the comma rules. In English, there are tons of rules. And when it comes to grammars, uh, to, gra to commas, there are more than 25 rules. Yeah, and there are a lot of exceptions. Indeed, I'm not teaching you today the 25 rules. No, I'm not going to do it. In our center, Atik and I and our research team went through 800 right from dictation plus sentences. And we have come up with the five comma rules that you will all the time find out. Okay. So if you are on top of these rules, if you get used to these rules, you will have no issues at all in the writing section in your exam. In today's session, the way we're going to conduct it, it will be Atik and I. Atik, I'm going to play a sentence for you using your experience. If you can guess where is the comma, and then we're going to more elaborate on that. Okay, okay. sure. Go for it. Let's get started. Let me exit the presentation mode. I'm playing, uh, I'm playing the first sentence shortly. Here we go. You ready, Atik? Yep. Go for it. In three, two, one. Tours operate all year around, but the busiest season runs from May. Okay, so uh, Ali, the sentence that I prepared and I had uh, questions about, and I felt that the students need to know and be aware of the comma rules. Uh, for this first one, it says tours operate all year around, but the busiest season runs from May. Uh, I feel uh, that there should be a comma after tours operate all year around. So after around. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that probably is the place where we should be putting the comma. But what's the grammar rule here? And why is the comma after, after the word around? Okay, I agree with you. There must be a comma after around. The reason is, let's read the sentence, tours operate all year around. This is one sentence, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one, we call it independent clause. Independent clause has a subject, which is tours, and it must have a verb which is operate. And mm -hmm. it must be understandable. Like now if I only say tours operate all year around, you've got a full message, okay? So this is one message, tours operate all year around. Let's look at the other sentence, the busier 
reason, uh, the busier season runs from May. This is another independent clause, another simple sentence. Understandable, simple yeah. sentence. It yes. is understandable. It can stand by itself. Okay. Yes. If I need to bring those two sentences and put them as one sentence, which is a compound sentence, I must join them using one connector from the fanboys, for example, right. like for and on. Uh, here I'm using the connector but. Okay. The rule is when you are joining two independent clauses, you must use but in this case, but you have to place a comma before but. And this is rule number one. When joined two independent sentences, you come up with a compound sentence. Okay. What would happen if you so, don't play the comma? Yes, you are losing some marks from the writing section. Okay. Okay. Thanks for so, carrying it out, Ali. Yeah, rule one. Let's go to rule number two. Ready? Yes. Three, two, one. All industries consist of input, process, output, and feedback. Okay. So this sentence reads, all country, all industries consist of input, process, output, and feedback. Um, now there are, you know, the, it, it, it sounds like there are multiple number of information. And when we find that out, there are multiple number of information, we tend to use the commas. But mm -hmm. if you could clarify what are the comma rules when we are having to use multiple number of commas. Yes. So as you see, guys, here and Atik, as you can see, we've placed two commas, yeah, after input and after process. And here I refer to the listing, yeah? In this sentence, the writer or the speaker is listing some pieces of information, okay? okay. So uh, what do industries consist of, yeah? It consists of input. This is number one. This is the first information. Process, this is the second information. Output and feedback. So when you are listing more than two things in a sentence, more than two nouns or more than two pieces of information, make sure you are placing a comma after, okay? Okay, and there's here... one more question, Ali. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, okay. uh, should I be putting a comma after output as well? Uh, that's really good. This one, comma is optional, yeah? You know, we have two different spelling uh, uh, styles, American or British. So this one, it depends on the style you are using, okay? okay. But right. the bare minimum that's is okay. the two commas in this particular uh, example. Okay, yes. yes. So please, the viewers, note it down. Rule number two, listing. Don't forget it. Otherwise, you'll be in a big trouble. Atik, ready for the third rule? Let's go for it. Three, two, one. Please note, submission deadlines are only negotiable in exceptional circumstances. Okay, so the sentence says, please note, submission deadlines are only negotiable in exceptional circumstances. So please note, so there is already some sort of a hint Mm. And I sense that there has to be a comma after that. Uh, but what would be the proper explanation, Ali? You are right. There is a comma after note. Uh, so please note, in English, we call it an introductory term. Yeah. Okay. The writer uses it sometimes to attract the audience attention. Yeah. Like just imagine I'm saying in general, without any introductory term, if I say submission deadlines are only negotiable, mm, it's okay. But if I say, please note, yeah, please note submission deadlines. Yeah, so here I'm attracting your attention, guys. So this introductory term must be preceded by a comma. And uh, would I be wrong if I simply write down, please note submission deadlines are negotiable in exceptional circumstances? Uh, where would the implications be if I miss out on that comma? Writing section is in a big trouble. You may get the listening score because you got the content perfectly, assuming that you got the spelling correctly. Right. But there is no comma. The writing section is uh, in a big trouble. So, yeah. so we have to make sure that we are doing this it's a check. It's a I must. think how many students have you got of yours got 78 in writing? Well, this could be one of those reasons. Who knows? Maybe right. this is yes. one of the reasons. So don't risk it, guys. So number three, introductory term. Uh, don't forget placing a comma after the introductory term. Okay. Let's go to the... Uh, rule number four. Ready, Atik? Yes. Three, two, one. When parents talk to children, the tense is simplified. So the sentence is, when parents talk to children, the tense is simplified. When parents talk to children, there is the tense is simplified. So I, f I feel like, you know, uh, wh what's going on here? So mm. I feel like, mm, the, the, if you have to do this, you have to do that. So, you know, there, there's some connectivity. Uh, what's, what's the rule here? I, f I sense that there has to be a comma there somewhere, uh, but it looks like that you've put the comma there after children comma. Yeah. And, uh, and you've also mentioned complex center. So please elaborate a bit more on this, please. Okay. So here in this case, we place a comma after children and we have come up with a complex sentence. This sentence has two parts. Part number one, when parents talk to children, yeah? 
this clause do have uh, independent uh, do have a subject and verb parents talk yeah subject verb but by itself it's not understandable yeah cannot stand by itself like now you are take and viewers if i tell you when parents talk to children so what yes so, what? so it leaves us with uh, you know so asking what? for more information yeah. so it's not understandable so this is in english we call it a dependent clause dependent because it does depend on something should come after okay or maybe it can come before the tense is simplified if i say the tense is simplified this is an independent clause which is understandable the tense is simplified you've got yes. the subject which is tense and you've got the verb okay yeah. Yeah. so the first clause is dependent the second one is independent yeah. joining them together make up for you a complex sentence you must place a comma after the dependent clause, dependent clause. okay Absolutely. however guys just an extra information uh, an extra rule if you are writing the independent clause first followed by the dependent clause it is okay not to place a comma like if the sentence was the tense is simplified when parents talk to children in this case there is no need for comma no because for the comma. independent came first but right. in this context the dependent comma independent and this is a complex sentence and this will be our fourth rule okay yeah. very informative let's go to the last rule that they may use in the exam three two one artists other than politicians played their own role as critics of culture what do you think okay think? so it says artists other than politicians played their own role as critics of culture so uh artists uh, other than politicians played their own role so uh you know, Ali, this sounds like, you know, if you simply put down the sentence as a whole without other than politicians, the sentence would still stand on its own. But we have that little phrase right there. It says other than politicians. So could you please elaborate into mm -hmm. what's the rule right there and what's what's okay. what's that? So in this sentence, uh, it was uh, with two commas after artists and after politicians. If you look at the sentence without the phrase in the middle, uh, other than politicians, you, it is understandable and you can read it easily if you say artists played their own role as critics of culture. However, in this context, the writer is adding more context, is elaborating more on artists, giving further information or description about artists. And this is in English, we call it interrupter. Yeah, it just come out of nowhere in the middle of the sentence to add some information about something was mentioned before. And this is a case here, you need to place two commas before and after, yeah? Okay. So the fifth rule, straight to the point, in the interrupter, add two commas before and after. If you miss one of them, you're in trouble. If you miss two, you're in a big trouble, yeah? Okay. From my side, Atik and viewers, those five comma rules are the magic rules. Trust me, guys, it took by us very long time to funnel them and come up with those rules. Be aware of them, apply them all the time, and you're on top of the writing section from a comma perspective. Okay, yeah. thank you for that, Ali. Uh, I believe we have another part to this discussion, so where you were uh, going to further elaborate on the second aspect, which was use of apostrophes. So yeah, this is one. Th this one is uh, very tricky for some students. I tend to see a lot of students who are mixing with apostrophe s, uh, without apostrophe, contraction, and so on. Uh, let's turn into practice. Uh, I think I'm going to play two sentences. If mm -hmm. you can guess which one comes with apostrophe and which one without. Okay. okay. Here we go. Three, two, one. Unemployment rate has fallen to its lowest level in years. Okay. Three, two, one. It's now acknowledged that his work was groundbreaking. Okay. So, Ali, the first sentence read, unemployment rate has fallen to its lowest level in years. Mm -hmm. And the second sentence reads, it's now acknowledged that his work was groundbreaking. So, uh, both of them has its, uh, but something tells me that the first one does not require any apostrophe at all. Mm -hmm. uh, however, for the second one, there has to be an apostrophe used. I just want a bit more clarification on behalf of the students as yes. well. So if you can give a bit more information to why that's the case. You are right. In the first one, there is no apostrophe. As you can see, it is ITS, its without apostrophe. The reason here, this is the possessive S here. Yeah? So here it's is related to the unemployment yeah so make sure guys when you use a possessive s don't use apostrophe unemployment rate has fallen to its to its yeah which lowest rate employment's one okay uh, the other one uh, there is apostrophe it is 
This is the original one. So it's here with apostrophe in the second sentence. It was originally two words, it and is, okay? Okay. So the contraction of this one is it's with apostrophe, yeah? Right. So the one with apostrophe is actually two words, it, the pronoun, and is the helping verb, okay? It is right. not acknowledged or it's not, uh, it's now acknowledged. Okay. okay. All right. Makes sense now. Let's go with one more apost uh, apostrophe rule. Okay. Here we go. Ready, I take. Yes. Three, two, one. Don't forget to hand in your assignment by next Tuesday. Okay. I think it's similar to the second sentence with it, where it says, don't forget to hand in your assignment by next Tuesday. So I think uh, this sentence right here, uh, it requires the apostrophe, but uh, Ali, can you please also please share to what, what's, the, what's going to happen if I write down do not instead mm. of don't? So do not, grammatically it's correct. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you're doing right from dictation as per the rules given by Pearson. You heard mm. it don't with apostrophe, you need to write it don't. What would happen if you don't write it or do not write it right, you're losing mark from the writing section. You're losing right. And here okay. is my message, guys. When you are listening to this contraction, make sure you are bringing the notes as quick as possible. Otherwise, later you will have forgot whether it was contraction or the full word. Okay, so okay. Uh, so we have to take notes as dictated. So I, as I was dictated, don't, I'll have to write down don't. But then again, since don't itself is a contraction, I have to use the apostrophe. Okay, Please. excellent. Thank you. And let's go to one more tricky rule in the apostrophe. Okay. So do I put the apostrophe before the S or after the S? It was a, if it was a possessive one. I'm going to straight to the point, play two sentences, and you mm -hmm. tell me where is the apostrophe in each of them. Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one. Sydney is Australia's largest city, chief port, and cultural center. Okay. Second one. Three, two, one. Archaeologists' new discovery stand out in previously overlooked foundations. All right. So, Ali, the first one read, Sydney is Australia's largest city, chief port, and cultural center. So, this already sounds like they're referring everything back to Sydney. Mm -hmm. So, they're trying to possess that singular noun right there. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the second one, I'm not too sure. So, I just need a bit more clarity from you. So, it says, archaeologists' new discoveries stand out in previously overlooked foundation. So what are the rules here? And okay. what are the boundaries? Okay. So in the first one, as you guys can see, the apostrophe came before the S, Australia's. So it was apostrophe S. Here it's referring to Sydney, which is a singular noun, okay? Mm -hmm. So the noun here or the subject, sorry, the subject is singular. So the apostrophe came before S, yeah, Australia's. However, in the second one, as all of you can see, the apostrophe came after S, okay? Because here archeologists, I'm referring to a group of archaeologists, yeah? It may be two, three, four, okay, whatever. Okay. So it was plural. If it is a plural one, the apostrophe should come after us. And one more thing students may ask me, Ali, how did you know that it was plural, yeah? I'm going to give you another rule. If it was singular here, or if it were singular, then there must be an article before it, like an, an archaeologist. Yeah, right. an archaeologist. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense now. So here, because there was no article, so I judged that it was a plural one, because it's a plural one, the apostrophe should come after S. Okay. Okay. So we, even, even though you may have, you're not too sure, you can still use your grammar rules to get clarity and then use the uh, use the contraction rules to to apply the contraction here. Yeah, you're kind of breaking the big problem into small problems. Small like, small is it problems. plural or singular? I think it's plural because there was no article in this context. Okay, Ali right. told me it's plural, then the apostrophe should come after us. Okay? Okay, yes. So, those rules, guys, again, just think of it. Sometimes you may get 78 in writing. It might be because of three mistakes in each sentence you made. One of them apostrophe, one of them comma, the other one is contraction, and you ended up losing maybe one mark or two marks. And if you have got this mark extra, you would have been 79 right now. So this is from my side. I think I will leave the floor for you to wrap it up. Okay, thank you, Ali. And uh, uh, thank you for clearing, you know, the simplest of the simplest grammar rules uh, that the students, you know, they probably were not aware up until now, or they seems to, or they tend to neglect them. So I would you know, strongly recommend that if you really want to pull your writing score 
with the help of write from dictation and since write from dictation is the most important task and on top of that we have you know we have the time restraints uh, because write from dictation is right towards the end not to mention your fatigue uh, because you know you have been sitting down and concentrating for 3 hours so guys when you are preparing when you are solving write from dictation questions every day make sure that you are building these skills always checking for your punctuation rules and and applying those rules to get your maximum scores uh, feel free to uh, you know be in touch with us if you need further furthermore explanation comment below and uh, we will come up with uh, other ideas in near future for you to give you more about pte that's it from pte today with me and ali and catch you next time bye bye